So Turing machine was introduced by Alan Turing in 1936. It's a simple mathematical model of a computer. So it models the computing capability of a computer. So basically all of the modern computers that are there are based on a Turing machine. So Turing machines were actually developed on the statement, I mean on the question that how just how much maths can we do by following an algorithm, an algorithm or a programmatically approach. So Turing came up with this general way of approaching this statement and how programmable machines would work. So basically a Turing machine has an is a finite state machine with an infinite tape which uh, a tape is basically like a sequences of inputs or an inputs of strings which contains a one or a zero or maybe a space. It normally accepts an input string and completes its computation by entering a final or accepting state. The tape is used for a working storage and also an input. So basically we can imagine a Turing machine like a little box which just moves on top of that tape and looks at the tape and performs certain operations which are basically built on some simple instructions. So the representation of Turing machine. The Turing machine is basically represented by six uh, variables where Q is the state of finite states, uh, finite set of states and uh, T is the set where we include the set of input symbols. The del is the next moving function or a mapping and f is the final state. So and b is a symbol for blank basically because as I said it can have one zero or a blank. So a Turing machine halts when it has no longer moves basically. If it halts in its final state it accepts its input otherwise it rejects its input. So basically we can say that it's in a layman term that it has a programmable book inside it and at any moment a Turing machine is at a particular state. So if we just imagine that uh, suppose a Turing machine is at state 23 looking at a number 0 and the program book states that change that 0 to 1 and go to some other state like state 359 and move one space right. So now the Turing machine moves one space right and is at a state 359. Now it's following that uh, program or the instruction defined in the state 359. So if suppose at uh, state 359, we say that uh, if it sees a 1, let that 1 remain as 1 and move left and go to some other state. So that's how basically a Turing machine works on the basis of some simple inputs and simple instructions. So the halting of a Turing machine is that some at, by following this particular instruction patterns, the Turing machine will finally halt and halt means it will finally stop and it doesn't have to do anything further. And that is our like final answer for the problem. So the Turing machine can be used as transducers to treat the entire non-blank portion as an initial tape, just as, just as I said treat the entire non-black portion of the tape when the machine holds as an output. And, the and this entire function is known as Turing computable if there exists a Turing machine that can perform the above task. So basically Alan Turing answered that how much math can we do? Well, there is no definite limit to how much math can we do by following a particular algorithm because it is undecidable and we cannot do it by some axioms. So the techniques for a construction of a Turing machine involves storage in the finite control, using multiple tracks, using Chekhov symbols, shifting over and implementing a subroutine. Now I would like Jayavrato to take over the presentation. Thank you, Orkupamko. I am Jayavrato. So the variations of Turing machines are the multi-tape Turing machines non-deterministic Turing machines, multi-head Turing machines, offline Turing machines, and multi-dimensional Turing machines. The non-deterministic Turing machines. A non-deterministic Turing machine has single one-way infinite loop. For a given variations of Turing machines are multi-tape Turing machines, non-deterministic Turing machines, 
मल्टी हेड ट्यूरिंग मशीन ऑफलाइन ट्यूरिंग मशीन एंड मल्टी डायमेंशनल ट्यूरिंग मशीन नॉन डिटर्मिस्टिक ट्यूरिंग मशीन a non deterministic turing machine has single one way infinite state for a given state and input symbol has at least one choice to make that is finite number of choices for the next each choice several choices of path that it might follow for a given input state next is multi head turing machine a multi head turing machine contains two or more heads to read the symbols on the same thing in one step all the heads sense the scan symbols and move or write independently multi head turing machine can be simulated by single head turing machine next is offline turing machine an offline turing machine is a multi head turing machine whose input step is read only that is writing is not allowed an offline turing machine can simulate any turing machine by one more step than turing machine the reason is that offline turing machine makes a copy of its own input into the extra step and that it can simulate Turing machine as if extra tape were input. Next is the multi-dimensional Turing machine. A Turing machine is said to be multi-dimensional if its tape can be viewed as extending infinitely in move more than one dimension. Turing machine with semi-infinite tape. A Turing machine with a semi-infinite tape has a left but no right tape. It is a two-track tape. upper track it represents the cells to the right at initial head position and the lower track it represents the cell to the left of the initial head position in the reverse order turing machine with semi infinite tape are equivalent to standard turing machine next is recursive and recursively enumerable language recursively enumerable languages are generated type zero grammars and recursively Enumerable language can be accepted or organized by Turing machine, which means it will enter into the final step for strings of language and may or may not enter into the rejecting step for strings which are not part of the language. Next is universal language and Turing machine. A universal machine essentially achieves this by reading both the description of machine to be simulated as well as input to that machine from its own tape. properties of turing machine it has an external memory which remembers arbitrary long sequences of input it has unlimited memory capability the model has a facility by which input at left or right on the tape can be read easily and the machine can produce a certain output based on its input there comes the end to our presentation thank you sir very good presentation very good presentation thank you